Welcome to Your Moment with Miguel Ramirez. Hello, my name is Miguel Ramirez, and in today's episode, it's going to be a live open introduction from me introducing the podcast guest into having the interview. I'm interviewing Kathy Cameron. That is uh, Kathy Heard on Instagram. That O is with a zero. Uh, Kathy is an accomplished model. She's written a book, and she currently is participating in screenplay writing. Uh, Kathy, how are you doing today? Doing okay. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. <laughs> and uh, so when did you begin modeling? Oh gosh, long time ago. I was 16, actually, and I'm not 22. It was longer ago than that. Um, when I was 16, I grew up in a very small town in Alabama and then moved to Mississippi into a very, very small town. Actually, when I was in Alabama, I was in Tuscaloosa, which is not such a small town, but moved to Starkville, Mississippi. And when I was 16, there was this boutique in town that was known throughout the state, actually, even though it was in this very small town, and they had a modeling squad. And I was chosen for that modeling squad. I'd had some modeling classes and quite a number of acting classes because I'd been acting for a while at that point. And went from there, uh, lots of runway shows, and then in, in at university, got involved in print modeling because there was a, a photography you know, curriculum there and the photographers were always looking for models. And since I was a runway model, I got involved with the print modeling. And so, uh, a few years ago, yeah. <laughs> and was that something that you could envisualize yourself doing? Was it something that gradually you had to feel confident within yourself? Uh, what pushed you into that direction? Yeah, I think you get the confidence quickly. So when I was taking the classes, when I was like 14 and 15, my mother put me in the classes. Um, I think it's sort of like a, not finishing school, but just to build confidence and graceful walking. And, you know, she wasn't really thinking that I would ever model. It was, you know, both my sisters did it as well. And neither one of them became models. But that confidence for me came very quickly. And um, because I got the confidence quickly, it continued, it, you know, it became a thing for me. But it's always been a hobby. It's, it's not a vocation, it's a hobby. Ah. And uh, being in the modeling uh, spectrum with photographers, events, certain things that go on, um, what would you say when beginning, what were some obstacles that you had to face? Mm. Well, and that was, you know, a, a few years ago. So there was a lot of the casting couch. And of course, that's been in the news lately with Harvey Weinstein and all of the uh, things that have come forward in the entertainment industry, which would, you know, modeling is a part of the entertainment industry. But of course, we've seen it in recent history as well in athletics and in all kinds of other places where, um, People take advantage of, people in positions of power take advantage of, of people that are trying to get into an industry in order to move forward. Thankfully, you know, my parents were there and they supported me when I was more of a child. I think I got taken advantage of a little bit, although I didn't get into any kind of big trouble at and university as I became more of an adult. Would you, when you say uh, take advantage, it would be people of higher uh, either employment positions, yes. certain type of economic positions, them using that to an abusive state. Right. The people that are, that are casting, oh, you want to be in model in this show? Well, you know, it could be anything from, and again, I didn't, get into any big trouble like some people have, like Harvey Weinstein with all the sexual favors and all of that. But it could be along the lines of, well, then I need you to get these photographs done and that's going to cost this amount of money and things like that. And those are things that if you're getting into modeling or acting, you should always look out for because nothing should ever cost you money. You should never have to pay money in order to be cast in something or in order to um, be a model for something that, that should never cost you any money. 
And uh, touching on that, would you say that in your modeling experience that there's a fair amount of scams out there? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, so I have a beautiful daughter who is an adult now, but when she was five, she was getting into modeling and acting, and I took her to a modeling, or actually more of an acting agency that... Uh, and I'm not going to say the name, but it's a well-known name, and they're still in business, and it's a franchise. It's a national franchise, mm -hmm. and they wanted, she had uh, her Z cards and everything, and they didn't like her Z cards. They wanted me to pay a lot of money to have her Z cards redone, mm -hmm. and of course, they didn't know that I was in the industry and that I immediately recognized that as a scam. And a lot of parents would just say, oh, yeah, here's my money because I want my child to be an actress or a model or whatever. And my daughter didn't like it anyway. So it was a good thing I didn't spend the money. <laughs> I would have wasted it. She hated it. <laughs> so, but a lot of children do like it and do very well. But there are a lot of scams out there. There are also uh, photographers that are a little scammy. There are models, by the way, on the other side. Of course, it can go the other way, too. There might be a photographer who's trying to build his portfolio and trying... So anybody that's more experienced than someone else, it can go both ways. The road can go both ways. What would you say is an apparent, obvious scam from a photographer? Like if somebody inquired you about booking, they wanted to work with you, something didn't feel right, what would be the initial immediate recognition that you would notice from somebody trying to do that? That's a good question. So the first thing that I look for is a release or contract. I do not work without a release or a contract as far as modeling is concerned. And if a t photographer says, oh, I don't, I don't use those, I don't like those, I've never heard of that. If they've never heard of it and you really think they're telling the truth, they're probably just inexperienced. But if they say, oh, I, I don't use those, and they act like they know what it is, and you think they know what it is, but they just don't want to sign anything, that's a big red flag. So if it were me, I would suggest, you know, never, ever, ever working without a written agreement. A release is usually very short. It's simple. You know, a contract can get confusing. Maybe that's a little too much, but you certainly want a release that says, you're not gonna sell my photos. You're not gonna use my photos on porn sites. You're not gonna Photoshop my face onto someone else's body, uh, those kinds of things. And the, there's, it's common sense. Put it in writing, sign your name. They sign their name, you get a copy, and uh, then you know exactly what you're doing and what you're not doing and what you can do and what you can't do. So you're not allowing yourself to be vulnerable to the people who you work with. Right. Like if they have a collection catalog of our photos and they own multiple businesses, they could easily profit off your image, make money off your image. They can put them on OnlyFans. They could do all kinds of things that you may or may not agree to them doing. So you have to remember as a model, if you get paid, Technically, they own the copyright, but that doesn't mean you don't have any rights. You still have rights. And uh, would you say that in terms of like image stealing, somebody collecting another person's images, uh, have you experienced that yourself? I have. I've recently been told that my photo was used uh, in a group on, I think it was MeWe or WhatsApp. And I'm not, I don't even have counts on those particular apps, but someone is using my photo there. But, you know, if you put your photos on Instagram, you know, you've put your photos on Instagram. Now, I mark all of my, you know, my, my photos say, or my, my uh, profile says copyrighted, but I still can't prevent anyone from using hmm. my photos. So I think you just, you know, you have to watch for it. And if you see one, someone using it, you have to try to get them to take it down. But on the other hand, any, any public, you know, any promotion is promotion. So someone who's seeing my photos, that's not always a, a bad thing. They'd probably want to find you who's this model, find additional photos. Possibly. So, 
And you see that on Instagram all the time. Someone will start a fake account with pictures of someone that's not them. And then they'll send you a direct message. They'll follow you. Then they'll send you a direct message. Anyone, not just a model. They'll send you a direct message and say, hey, can we be friends? Well, they're fishing for your personal information. Mm -hmm. So they can steal your identity. So, you know, photos get stolen all the time. And I'd hate to think that mine are, but I'm not special. So mine can be stolen just as well as anyone else's. Wow. And uh, for being in modeling as long as you have, what would you say are some of the most, what would be the things that you gain from modeling? Like there's, you know, the recognition, there's the appreciation, but in terms of after a shoot, you finish a shoot for the day, you're done. Is there like a mental release? Does it help you feel like uh, energized? Uh, what do you feel after a shoot? Um, it can. It's also hard work. Um, one of the things that always surprises me when I go to a group shoot is sometimes the newer models, who by the way are not always young. I mean, models can be any age. We need, m models and actresses are needed to promote all kinds of clothes, all kinds of products. So your age doesn't matter. Your body type doesn't matter. Uh, models are needed a across the board for all kinds of different things. But when models are newer, sometimes they'll come over and they're really excited and oh, this is so glamorous. And it's not really that glamorous. It's, uh, it's hard work. Your back hurts when you're done. Your feet hurt when you're done. You've squeezed your body into all these weird shapes. Contortions. Um, if yeah. they do your hair and makeup, they're, you know, you probably don't like the way it looks. They're sticking their wand, you know, doing your mascara and they tease your hair all up. And, and um, I prefer to do my own hair and makeup. But a lot of times you can't. You go to a shoot and they're going to do it. So uh, for me, it's, it's a hobby. It's a hobby that pays, which is nice. It's nice when your hobby pays a little bit of money, but it's definitely not a vocation. I don't think I would enjoy doing it full time. But I do enjoy it. I, it, it, you know, I, I guess because I'm good at it. If you're not good at it or if your back hurts too much, you know, you might do it a few times and not like it. So, but there's, uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a job that needs to be done. And some people enjoy being on this side of the camera. I don't know anything about the other side. Don't ask me about an F-stop or, <laughs> or uh, any of that stuff, lighting or whatever. I don't know anything about it. I just stand where I'm told. So, or sit. <laughs> And uh, from your experience, would you say that you've got to meet uh, many different types of people, either in the photography or the model realm? Oh, absolutely. It's been a great way to meet people. I've been able to touch a few famous people. I've met Vanna White. I've met Rick Dees. I've met um, Sean Stiles. I've met, I mean, I've met people from... Our, so Sean Stiles, he's like a local, in San Diego where I live, he's like a local celebrity, he's a um, TV weather person. So I've met local type celebrities, I've met big celebrities, I, not a lot though. Um, but as far as regular people, I mean, it's just, that's one of the advantages is the people that you meet, the other models that you meet and make friends with and have experiences with and then you see them around and it's I went to a birthday party Thursday night I saw a girl that I've modeled with before that I had not seen for two years it was great to see her and catch up and see how she's doing oh, that's good. and you know the photography community uh, in Southern California all around Orange County Riverside County San Diego County and LA County I've met a lot of photographers and so anywhere I go someone is shooting people on the red carpet oh hi how are you it, it is really great to meet the people and everybody is is pretty great I mean it's a good industry and there's stuff going on there are LA, there's LA Fashion Week there are uh, smaller fashion shows there are designers that are always doing web catalogs or print catalogs or billboards or radio stations that are, you know, there's always fun things to do and apply to. And I've done a little bit of acting, which is really fun. 
So let the doors get opened. Uh, speaking of the uh, different types of events that you've been on, when it comes to safety, if you're traveling by yourself, um, what are some precautions or what are some things that you can do to kind of help, like if it's meeting a photographer you don't know or an environment that you've never been to in the past, uh, what would you say are some safety measures that you would take? So number one is make sure that friends, a couple of friends and family and or family members know where you're going to be and what times you're going to be there. So share the address, the phone number, the person that's your contact person with a couple of people. And then secondly, if you can, if it's a new environment, bring someone with you. Uh, if a photographer says no escorts allowed, that again is a red flag. They should always welcome an escort. And a proper escort just comes, they stay in the car or they sit in a corner quietly. They're not going to be involved in any way. They're just there as, as your escort. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all they're there for. So um, that's definitely a good thing to do. But definitely be sure someone knows where, you, where you're going to be and what times you're supposed to be there. So if you don't come home, they don't see you for two days, they know, you know. What's going on. Where, where to start looking. Because, you know, anything could have happened. You could have broken down on the side of the road on the way home. Mm -hmm. But at least they know where to start looking. Right. And so in that kind of situation, would you say that you've uh, noticed from when you began modeling till now like there's a shift in how cautious or how safe a model needs to be in those kind of situations mm, i don't know if there's been a shift i think it's been a thing pretty much my whole life of, of being being safe i think it's easier now because our phones have you know find your phone on it and things like that that can be helpful. I've never been in a, in a situation like that, but I've definitely taken escorts places. Um, but even when I was 16, you have to be, you know, my mom would go with me. You have to be careful. I remember I did a, a Tommy Bahama show and it was in Miami and we lived in Mississippi. It was a long drive, but my mother insisted on going. She wanted to be there with me, even though I was over 18 at that time. So it's, it's really, it's really good to, to be safe. Yeah. And that's something that I was thinking of as from the photographer's side, like even if it was a friend, an acquaintance, somebody to where at least they have that security there, they're able to like ask someone or go to someone when they feel unsafe and then just general safety too. Like a lot of times, especially if it's events in LA, you might not know the area, the kind of setting position you may be in, and then having that kind of safety there. Yes, downtown San Diego too. So yeah, the events and, and you know, not just one-on-one, -on -one, but events, definitely. I remember recently going to an event in LA and it was a fabulous event at this really great, it was a small, venue uh, music venue but the surrounding area was a little sketchy and where i had to park was a little sketchy and i had to walk in and it didn't start until 10 o'clock at night mm. so it was really good that we were in a group and that doesn't definitely guarantee your safety but you definitely you feel better mm -hmm. you know if you have a if you're with a group so. would you say that you've gone to some photography meets that have felt less than safe or not as interested? Um, you know, usually, especially the group shoots are pretty good. I, a couple of times have been uncomfortable, I guess, to the point where I've decided to leave early. That happened actually recently in Oceanside. And I just wasn't quite comfortable with what was going on. And I'm not sure why. I just was getting kind of a bad vibe. You should definitely trust your gut. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. for two, and I'll say that for two reasons. One is because your gut is pretty smart. And if your gut says something is wrong here, it might be wrong. So it's good to leave. The second reason is even if your gut is wrong and everything's fine and there's nothing sketchy, but you're feeling like something is off, the pictures aren't, your pictures aren't going to be very good. Yeah. So if you're not comfortable, you're not going to project that in the photographs. Mm -hmm. And so then it's, you know, it's maybe not a, a good way to spend your time. So definitely listen to your God. And uh, from your side as a model, what would be some apparent red flags when coming to see a photographer? Like something to where you organize a plan to meet someone, somebody books you, you're about to go see the photographer, you get a sense of either his appearance or maybe he seems kind of like, you know, uh, mysterious or wanting to meet you in a strange setting uh, what would be some indicators to you yeah definitely if somebody wants to if a photographer that i don't know wants to shoot in their home that's a little a little scary um if they don't want to give you references or if they give you references and you can't contact them mm. that's a little scary i always check references and i always prefer if one of at least one of their references is someone that I already know and then I will also reach out to other models hey have you ever worked with this photographer what do you what did you think I did that recently actually with a photographer that I'm now very good friends with but um, his name is Michael but before we shot for the first time I he booked me and I had never met him before but I knew that he had worked with a friend of mine and I contacted her and she said, Oh, he's great. Yeah, no problem. And so I went, I was still a little tentative, but now we've worked together several times. So great. It definitely check the references. Um, and they, they may ask you for references, you know, you should give them your references too. Um, if they don't want to give you their real name, there are some photographers that want to go by a pseudonym and they don't want to tell you their real name. Again, like I said, if they don't want to give you the contract to read in advance, mm -hmm. or if they say, I don't use contracts, I would think twice. If they say, please don't bring an escort, that's a red flag. I mm -hmm. would think twice. If you walk in and there's, you know, BDSM stuff <laughs> all over the wall. <laughs> And then wow. I would definitely ask in advance, what, what is the theme of the shoot? Mm -hmm. And if they're providing wardrobe, okay, you need to know what that is. Are we shooting boudoir? Are we shooting fashion? You know, you need to know how, you know, how much skin are they expecting you to show? And mm -hmm. is that an amount you're comfortable with? Has that happened to where you take a booking from a photographer it's designed or it's scaled to be here's the spring wear attire you show up and it's the complete polar opposite of what was described i haven't had that happen but i would not do that so if it's supposed to be a fashion shoot i have a certain rate that i charge for that the more skin that shows the more i charge mm -hmm. and if they booked me at so and so an hour to shoot fashion and then I show up and they've got a bunch of lingerie. That's, that's not okay. And I never shoot lingerie without an escort. Never. And uh, from your experience as a model, what are some uh, positive experiences that you've had? Oh, there are so many positive experiences. So I did a, a one time I worked with a boutique in Del Mar and it was a lingerie boutique and she had some swimsuits and she did a, a swimsuit charity show. So the models all worked free because it was for a charity called Got Your Back, which is a charity that packs backpacks for our underprivileged or needy children and gives, you know, with school supplies at the beginning of the school year. So all the models modeled these bikinis and hats. It was called Bikinis and Hats for Got Your Back. It was really cute. <laughs> and we worked for free and she called me about a month later and said she was doing a web catalog and I ended up getting a paid job because I had done the free 
charity sure. show. So that's a positive experience. And she's still a friend of mine. She's now moved to Norco. And I'm going to stop and see her on my way home. So that's great. We became really good friends. Uh, I've made so many friends in the industry. I've met wonderful people like you. Oh, thank you. And I've done, I've gotten to do a lot of podcasts. I've, like I said, been able to get back into acting, which is really where this started. I started acting in the second grade. And then the modeling classes and the modeling when I was 16. And I mostly just modeled, and now I've gotten a little bit back into acting. So from your experience with modeling and also acting, um, what would be like the idea of preparation the day of? Is there something that you do, kind of like a regimen, a ritual, to kind of help get in that mindset? I do. I try not to be late. Of course, I was about 10 minutes late here today. But uh, I try to be a little bit early. It's good to be about five minutes early. You don't want to be too early, but it's good to be about five minutes early. And I will tell you that will set you apart in the industry also. If you can make yourself known as being someone that's on time, that will set you apart in a positive way in the industry because a lot of actors and actresses and models and photographers and cinematographers and directors and people in this industry tend to be late. Um, by aiming to be early, if you're late, you're still on time. Secondly, I get up in the morning. If I'm acting, the first thing I do is go back over my lines. If I'm just modeling, or if I'm acting after I'm finished going over my lines, I sit down. I have a cup of coffee and just no TV, no radio, no phone. I just be quiet for five minutes. Just kind of like a meditative state. Exactly. And I'm, I pray and I center myself. I set a timer for five minutes. And when the five minutes is up, then I'm up, I'm getting my makeup on, I'm doing whatever I have to do, clothes, whatever, and I'm off. But I take that five minutes to center myself. I wish I did it every day, but I don't. That would be a good thing to do every day, right? Yeah. But on a, on a day when I'm going to model or act, that, that's, I definitely take that five minutes. What is something that you would recommend to someone who is just beginning in modeling? If somebody's just starting out, they may not have as much experience. Uh, what are just some beginner tips or advice you would recommend? Yeah, good question. Um, the first thing I would do is tell you to, and not to discourage anyone, if you want to model or you want to try modeling and see if you like it, you should definitely do it. But set your expectations so that you won't be disappointed because it's really not glamorous. Someone is going to be telling you what to do. Stand here, do this. No, don't do that. Make up your mind when you walk on that set that you're going to be easy to work with and take direction. Remember, it's not personal. They can see you, you can't see you. So when they say move your hand, relax your jaw, something like that, it's because they can see you. So just remember, it's they're, they want you to be successful. So just relax and take the direction and do the best you can. And if you can, try, try to have fun because the more fun you have, the better the pictures or video or whatever you're doing will be because you'll be more relaxed. And remember, everyone is there for your success. So even if they're sticking you in the eye accidentally while they're putting your mascara on or something, it's not, they're not being mean. They're, everybody wants you to be successful and, and be as confident as you can. And remember, we're all beautiful. Everyone is beautiful. And we're all humans. We're all one, one race, human race. We're all in this together. And no matter what you were doing, what you were wearing, what product you were displaying, or whatever you were modeling or, or representing, it's positive and it's good for all of us. And everyone 
we're all in this together. So, but just, just set your expectations that you're, you know, nobody's, you're not the queen. Nobody's going to do this to you. And, <laughs> and it's work. It is work, but it will be worth it. So, and if you don't like it, you never have to do it again. And not everyone likes it. So, but if you want to try it, you should definitely try it. And, um, as far as current projects, uh, what are some things you have coming up or things that you're involved with? Okay, so yeah, um, so upcoming again is the season two of Shooters. We are starting to have meetings about that. I am not a producer, so I'm not really completely in the know about it, but I am starting to meet with the producers about the writing and acting. We'll probably be shooting, shooting that in the next three months, so that will probably drop onto Amazon Prime probably next summer. I would say probably July, August of 20 of this year 2021 this upcoming summer i should have said not next summer this summer yes. and so that'll be exciting and it will probably be 10 episodes so we'll have season one of eight eight episodes and then probably 10 episodes in the in the season two uh my my movie and if you want to follow my instagram uh, which miguel mentioned it is kathy horde it's all one word K A T H Y H zero R D. Oh, and then also we're gonna flash text. Sure, that'll be so great. And I'll be I'll be dropping the information about the screenplay that I just wrote and where that's going, if it's gets sold or what we're gonna be doing with that and when we get it copyrighted and release the title, so that'll be great. And I just did an infomercial for SELPA and I've forgotten what that stands for, which is very embarrassing, but it is a 501c3. It's a special, the SE of SELPA is for special education. And my son was in special education. So it's a, um, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. And this is a group that is working for children that need special services in our public schools. And so I was very excited to do that infomercial and that will be coming out really soon. So I'll be dropping those links as well. And uh, just the uh, final message, um, what is something that you'd like to leave off as your uh, either lasting message, something you wanna leave the audience with to listen to? Um, so my tagline has for several years been joy is my beauty secret. So when people ask me, you know, what do you do to stay young or what do you, you know, this or that or whatever, I think we all have joy inside of us. It all comes from inside and we all have our own personal beliefs. I know what mine are. That's not necessarily what yours are, but we all have something that we're grounded from. So let that joy bubble up and one race, human race, and let's just remember to support each other and just be joyful and get through these hard times and move on to better times. Goodbye, COVID-19. Hopefully, we could only hope COVID-19 just goes away. Goodbye, COVID-19. Definitely. <laughs> All right, well, uh, thank you very much, Kathy. It was a joy interview. Thank you. It was great being here. Thanks for having me. Stay up to date with news, interviews, and upcoming show episodes by following your moment with Miguel Ramirez on Spreaker.com 